Welcome back to the Win With Dice podcast, a podcast featuring members of the Win With Dice team. I'm Calvin, and this week I am joined by Cam. Hello! Uh, hey Cam, it has been a while since I had you on here. Uh, last time I was on here with Deanna, and we were talking about, you know, making a dungeon. And we ended up making that really cool goblin hospital thing a few months ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I thought was a lot of fun, so I thought I would pull you back on here because Ramon is uh, is out for this week, so I will... Well, because I'm awesome. <laughs> and also because you're awesome, yes. Uh, I was hoping I could pick your brain about some ideas uh, and see what we can get out of that. Uh, of course, this podcast is all about tabletop RPGs, running them, playing them, and our uh, you know experiences on either side of the screen. Either side of the screen. Uh, whether as a player or a GM or transitioning in between. We like to try to take sort of like a casual approach to running RPG games. So we can kind of, you know, let people know that it's not so complex to try running your own RPG game. And in fact, you can probably come up with some, you know, unique idea that the people you're playing with haven't heard of or played before. Uh, Of course, before we get going, we have to start with the most important part of the show, which is the win with dice weekly gm tip of the week uh which normally is not my responsibility uh i either put it on ramon or on our guest uh i don't know if you have a random piece of advice you would want to throw at people i can certainly make something up in the moment uh i don't know cam if you have a what would if you had to give some advice to someone playing a tabletop rpg for the first time what would you say to them be yourself be yourself yeah and it's okay to ask questions if you don't get a rule or to roll for something like the skills and stuff like it's okay to ask questions yeah definitely um like i think you, you want to be playing with a group that you're comfortable with uh especially mm-hmm. for these rpgs and you have to like be vulnerable and improvise things so if there are people that you can't ask questions to then i feel like there's gonna be some issues there so yes be yourself and ask the questions you need because, you know, we're all there to have fun. We all want to know how to play the game if we're playing it for the first time. I think that's a pretty good tip. <laughs> uh, once again, I, I have escaped the responsibility of having to come up with something uh, <laughs> by putting the responsibility onto someone else. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> I can tell this is going to be a good episode because you're already working with me very well. But yeah, let's get into the meat of the show. Uh, now, Cam, you played a game just yesterday, uh, you said it was? It was D&D, though. Yeah, so you played some D&D 5th edition. Uh, on here, we talk a whole lot about Pathfinder 2nd edition, uh, as well as some other stuff like Starfinder, Music Masterminds, a whole ton of Lancer, uh, if you want to go check out our various Lancer contents. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you played a 5th a, 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 a edition game. Um, I personally haven't played 5th edition in like a year, and I just did a one-shot that had um, not a whole lot of combat in it. So I was kind of curious about your experiences. Um, I guess we could just get into maybe a bit of system talk, but first up, like how much of the story do you feel comfortable sharing with people? Because I know you played with like a different group online. So like, what was the situation you were in? Like, what were you playing and what was the story you were going through? Yesterday? Yeah. It wasn't online, it was, um, we went to level up games in Mississauga and we played with people face to face. Ooh. Yeah, that was cool, that was cool. What was that like after (laughs) so many months? I mean, like, everyone had to show vaccine passports and Mm. we felt safe doing that. And everyone was wearing masks too. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, I I wondered if that would be, like, awkward for talking, because I know some people, like, going to, like, conventions and stuff like it's really scaled back and everything but you do have to have your mask and everything i know it's kind of hard to communicate in those um but did that like it's actually okay oh yeah like did it because yeah, whereas was it like a smaller room uh sort of like more closer together or like what kind of space were you in we were in one table it was like like the riddle room something like that okay toronto and you all just sat at like a single table yeah Okay. Um, all right. So yeah, let's let's talk about the actual game itself. Um, <laughs> you know, what was your character? And again, like, what was the? Because I know, I know it was your first session. You just started, but what can you tell me about the first session? So like, Diana, she's playing like a. Okay, first I'm playing a dragonborn paladin. Mm-hmm. Which, 
class in a race I've never played before in like other RPG games. Because I just wanted to do something with like a little bit of magic. Because I think paladins can like heal and do a little bit of magic. Yeah. Because like with like other characters I played back then, it was like all very tanky. I still want to be tanky, so I still I chose like a paladin. Don't want to do damage. Right. Like yesterday, Deanna, she's playing like a human warlock, I think. She fired like an eldritch blast. Ooh. She missed, so she hit me instead. Ooh, awkward. <laughs> Very awkward. I took a lot of damage, like I almost died. But that is what the tanks do. <laughs> so what was the um, the story, like the situation in your game? How were you adventurers all coming together? So we were like at a ta tavern and there was Classic. this dwarf that came in. I was like sitting by the bar looking very cool with my glaive and my scythe and my shield and my chainmail. Nice. And this dwarf comes in and he's like, I have two cargoes that needs like escorting. I'll give you like 10 gold per person. I'm like, yeah, I could use some money, but I'm also like very nice. I would do it for free. Not really. I want to be a nice person because I'm a paladin. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Is that sort of like an so intersection like, of like what you want to do and what you think your character wants to do? Yeah, like I'm like, no, like it's what I'm supposed to do with the class that I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. So what happened next? And then, um, yeah, I was like one of the first people that volunteered. And the others, like Deanna, were just like kind of waiting for things to happen. Eventually, we formed a team. And the DM was like, do you guys want to like talk to each other before you go to the actual drink? And I said, was like, I'm cool if people like start introducing themselves, but I won't start the conversation. And so we didn't talk until the next day because nobody wanted to be friends then. <laughs> oh, so... Was it a um, was it a team of edgy loners situation, or was it just uh, everyone was awkward about communicating? Oh, we didn't know each other. Oh, so like you, the people, the players also didn't know each other. So was that sort of like a roadblock to having your characters introduce themselves to each other? No, so I think the characters were all just socially awkward. The actual people, like we, when we met, we all clicked like right away. Oh, okay. Our characters are like. Too cool for each other, I guess. <laughs> so everybody was the cool one then. I mean, I was the coolest one. It didn't well, show, course. but because I rolled like really, really low, but I just need to hit and my cool would show. I mean, that just goes without saying, Cam. That's true of every <laughs> space that you're in. <laughs> so you all agreed to this job. Uh, the next day came, you didn't know each other's names, and then what happened? Then everyone was like, where are you positioning, right? I was like, well, I'm... Because I was so confident going into this campaign. I was like, my AC is 16. Ooh. And like, my damage is like 1d10 plus 3. Hello. I was like, yo, I'm going to lead everyone. So I'm just like, I'm like second in position because the elf was leading the way. Mm -hmm. I forgot what her class was. But she was an elf. And then she, t like, later on the game, she touched someone and they evaporated. So she was a magic person. Damn. Yeah. yeah, I was like very confident. I was like walking ahead of everybody. And then the elf saw like horses with arrows, right? And then, um, yeah, we did a perception check. A lot of people got very low, so they were just like looking at mushrooms. But I saw like the horses with arrows and the horses were looted. And there was like blood marks. Something has been dragged there. Ooh. Okay, so did you have to stop to investigate? This is sounding kind of familiar. I think I know what adventure this is, but I will see. It's I... a module, yeah. Um, did you stop to investigate the area? Yeah, we did, and goblins walked out. Ooh. So how did uh, how did how did your uh, first combat go with fifth edition? Okay, it was very bad because I only <laughs> got like two hit once. Because like first the it's like okay, first of all we're like level ones, so we're very very squishy. Yeah. Like, my, my hit point was 11. Ooh. Then, like, Deanna missed. Hit me. That was, like, a lot of my life already. Okay? Then, like, then my turn came. I was like, 
Oh, I'm gonna hit this thing with my 1d10 damage. And I rolled I rolled like a four. My my attack bonus is five, so that's like a nine. It wasn't enough to hit somebody, and I dropped my glaive instead. So I didn't get to show off. Ooh. I, just, I just took a lot of the damage. <laughs> that same goblin hit me. That was like left in one hit point. I'm very strong, I promise. <laughs> hey, I believe you. Uh, I know how I know how paladins roll, uh, yeah, but I yeah. also know how dice roll. <laughs> yeah. But also, um, a DM said like 17, and I'm like, wait, that's like past 16, so I'm gonna get hit. As so, like, I was left in one one life. I was gonna do like lay on hands, but I don't really know how that works. So. It's yeah. just like a healing thing, right? Yeah, to heal myself, but like I don't, because it it said something like I'll, I'm gonna read it to you. Sure. Yeah. I will pretend to know fifth edition rules. It, it says like you have a pool of healing power that can restore five HP per long rest. As an action, you can touch a creature to restore any number of HP remaining in the pool, or five HP to either cure a disease or neutralize a poison affecting the creature. But I'm like I don't know if I need to long rest first. Before I can heal, or like I heal and then I recover that and then long rest. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. I, I don't I know how the long rest is into it. I would have assumed you would start with that, but yeah, okay. Um, you'd probably, you should probably have that. I don't know. Well, so what about the rest of your team? How did they uh, pull? Did they pull through? Did they help you uh, defeat those goblins? Yeah, 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 but I'm like, you know, I should be the one doing the damage. <laughs> well, now you have space to redeem yourself. Uh, what you have now I is a do, character arc. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little bit on my ego there. Like, my paladin's ego. Your paladin's <laughs> pride. <laughs> my paladin's pride. I need to choose a god. Like, I think, like, whoever that god is that I still have to choose was disappointed in me. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, so like if I didn't take the damage from my team player, like I think I would have been fine. Potentially, but I mean, so going forward, like is that going to be part of the relationship between your two characters? You know what, that could like create drama, so maybe I'm going to be like cautious around this person. Because I'm a paladin, I shouldn't be vengeful. No, but someone no. also did blast you in the back when you're in the middle of a fight, and that's not very a helpful. A rich blast. <laughs> no, they don't even have to like. I don't. I didn't even have to roll like how to save myself. It was like instant. It just happens. You just roll damage, not even like whether to see if it's gonna hit me or not. Wait, no, that's why it hit me because she. Yeah, yeah, yeah never mind. Did she roll? She rolled like a one or something, right? Uh, she was gonna hit someone else, but then she missed, so it hit me. Okay, I get it now, yeah. <laughs> she missed. <laughs> yeah, shooting into combat, always very difficult. Yeah. So, uh, I assume you all survived the goblin combat, or this would be a very sad story. Yeah, I had like, one HP left, but everyone was like, okay. But then we took a long rest, so like, I recovered all of my HP. Oh, you recover all your HP with the long rest in fifth edition? I guess I think I knew that. I think that's I think, where I, I think was that's what from. happened. Okay, good. I'm like on D and D Beyond, right? And I clicked wrong Ooh. rest. And yeah, applied yeah. it, and then yeah, it went back to eleven. Yeah, I I used to think that was a Pathfinder thing, but in Pathfinder two, it's certainly not. Um, you get some HP back, and you're, you've got to be happy with it. If it's not all of it, well, it's tough luck. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's good there, and you should have your lay on hands now at least. But how does that work though? I still have to figure that out, like, it what sounds, the long rest means. It sounds like you have five points, and you can choose to, like, heal a certain amount up to five onto someone. Or you can spend all five to cure disease, if I'm understanding what it was. What is the long rest part? Like, after long rest, or like, during combat I could use it? I think you can use it during combat, I would assume. Um, I and I recovered those that. points after long rest, I think. Yeah, like after you do a yeah, long okay. rest and you get them back. There's the lots of he healing points, I think. Yeah, that the, pools, the, the pool of five points or whatever it'll be as you level up. Yeah. At least that's what I assume. You should probably check with the DM first, because... Yeah. I I've just should. I've only learned fifth edition by osmosis from watching like Critical Role and other shows, so 
pretty sure that's a thing they've done. I think so. Uh, so your team rested and camped out for the night, and then was that the end of the session, or did you do more? I think uh, there was, like, night watch. Because I was, like, just sleeping, recovering from my injuries. But, like, yeah, there was this, like, preacher, quote-unquote. Like, a lot of, like, uh, inches or something. And somebody did, like, a check. And then, like, squirrels ran away. And then there was, like, loud noises. So we thought that was a creature. But it was just a tree. Ooh. Squirrels. The squirrels ran away because, like, somebody made a noise. Uh, and that okay. was the end of the session. Just a little bit of paranoia. So, um, the cart, was the, was your dwarf pal supposed to be on that cart? Or, like, what was the deal with the cart that you came across? The cart that we were escorting? Yeah, the one that you, you said you came across, like, a horse and it was ambushed, or? Yeah, the horse was, like, there was just horses. Oh, it was, it was just looted. a thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. It was like blood tracks. Because it sounded a whole lot like the uh, the Lost Mine of Fandelver adventure. I think that's the name of the campaign. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, um, I have been playing through that. Uh, or, uh, my friend Tim, uh, I don't know if I have introduced you to him yet. I probably no, should I find a point that. in time to do that. Uh, but he's been running Lost Mine of Fandelver, converted to Pathfinder for us. Uh, we've been having a lot of fun with that. We actually did a quick little game today. Um, not all the players were here, though, so we ended up just doing, like, a non-canon beach episode. Oh. Uh, but we have been going through the actual canon of the uh, module, so I'm kind of excited to hear, like, how it goes for you. Because it's been a whole lot of fun for us, and we make, we've been making a whole lot of decisions that have kind of changed what things we do first, what order we do them in, and how long certain things take. So I'm really curious how your next session is going to go and like where you guys are going to end up next. I want to hit something. Show my strength. <laughs> if I'm remembering correctly, you're going to have a lot of chances to do just that. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, so what I wanted to talk about, um, along with everything else, is just sort of uh, your process for making your character. Like, what went into making this new character? What can you tell me about them? Okay, so I chose a Dragonborn because I've never played, like, a really magical creature. Mm -hmm. But then, like, I chose a Paladin because, um... Okay, at first I wanted to do someone that controlled the dead. I looked into, like, something like a Necromancer or, like, a Death Domain Cleric. But my DM is like, you know, like, that's really, like, far, far ahead in the future. Like, that takes a lot of skills chose a paladin because like i want to be tanky i also want to heal a little bit but not really just focus on healing right that's like a cleric kind of thing right yeah but then i came up with this backstory okay and i was like wait my backstory doesn't match my uh, my class so i kind of tweaked my backstory to make it more like a paladin kind of thing okay so you so you didn't you came in with the backstory idea but you instead kind of changed it up to fit the class you were then choosing yeah um rather than like coming up with the backstory first and then figuring out what class fits with that because i know some people do that or just like they have yeah. a class they want to play and it's like well how do i get there so exactly, what did you yeah. what did you have to change in your backstory like what was it originally it was like it was like i grew up in poverty my my character I was like, like I plug. I mean, my backstory is still kind of like a criminal, mm -hmm. and I kind of was like a Robin Hood person kind of thing. I said like my rival is Robin Hood because like better than him at like providing for the weak and protecting the poor. Of course. So I changed that. Like you know, like still Robin Hood's like my rival, but like I know that there's like a noble way to take care of the weak and provide for the poor like that's what i'm doing like you know like instead of and then i built and then as a criminal background i made this like kind of community like i called it like the lost and found so like i steal things and provide for them or like i raid things and provide for them so i changed that to like um instead of me making something like, it's my religious organization's community which i still have to choose what that is but i still like want to provide and protect them uh, okay 
So you were able to hit sort of like the same themes in that you're yeah. this person who's out there like providing for people. You just kind of change like essentially the setting of it, if yeah. that's a good description of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like, does that, do you, do you think that's a significant change or is that just like an aesthetic kind of thing so you can get it to fit with the class? Like, does that, like how much does that change the character uh, to change it from making this community of lost and found people and cha or changing it to like a more a community focused around like a single deity or whatever around this like whatever that god is that community but like i think it's just like aesthetic kind of thing how i act now right like mm -hmm. i could still be cocky but nice right like still be confident i could yeah but like yeah one of like my biggest fear is like um go back to the same person as i was like that dark selfish self yeah um well with fifth edition if i remember uh like you have to have flaws uh and certain things with your character as well like it gives you an opportunity to insert certain um backstory or rp based aspects to your yeah. character so my dm did like the knives spoons and fork oh talk about that yeah. please I know about knives. I've done plenty with knives, but what I don't know, uh, like what are spoons and forks in this context? So like spoons is like my guilty pleasure, and my favorite childhood memory, and like the environment I'm most comfortable with. Like my knife, one of the, my knives is like Robin Hood, which is like the one I talked about. And the secret that my character is keeping is like um. Putting my heart out makes me feel like vulnerable because like I like I spent most of my life as a criminal, right? So I'm like mostly like unfeeling, so I'm scared to like let people in. Mm -hmm. That's like my secret. Like my ongoing obligation is like you know like whatever that community is that's like worshiping a god or you know. I said it was like they're my reason for having a good soul. Like they're the ones saving me from like eternal damnation. You know when my time comes. Ooh. Yeah. very strict deity you're dealing with so your your mm. knives are like potentially harmful things your spoons are good things what are the forks in this situation it's like the primary drive like my reason for adventuring oh, okay i see okay um i don't think i've heard that used before uh i've certainly heard knives used in the context of handing your dm a certain portion of your backstory for them to stab you in the back with it later yeah, pretty much, yeah. Uh, which is something that is fun to go through, and hopefully I get to do to some uh, some people in the future. It's interesting. If you haven't used it yet, because we only had like a session zero, yeah. which ended up being the first session because everybody came prepared with their character. Yeah, that's understandable. Um, eh. Like definitely, if you have if you have a limited amount of time, like it's fair that like, people just want to want to get into the game. As soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, so something we kind of touched on a bit uh, is just the idea of like maybe what you want to do versus what your character wants to do or needs to do. So I was kind of yeah. wondering like how you like to play out that conflict. Um, if you want, if you either try to nudge towards doing the thing you want to stay in character, or just completely like leave behind the thing you want because you know that's not what your character would do. Yeah, because I'm used to like playing like, you know, like Goblin too, like if you remember, like yeah, you're, you're Goblin goblin. had a change of heart, like, you know, that kind of, it's kind of like the things I go for. Or like Merleave too was like, what was Merleave? Was Merleave a monk or something? Um, I th she might, I think I remember, yeah, she was like the big half work one, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like usually I go for like uh bad person which i still am doing the bad person who had a change of heart or like i uh, like uh like, was it cory like when we were playing with goblin like he stabbed me because i like was so selfish that's kind of mm. when i changed because i was just scared of cory his character is very scary and will is very good yeah, at just he, chopping things yeah, down he, he did damage to me, so I was like, you know, maybe I should change when this guy watching me in the back. <laughs> That's cool. Um, so, but yeah, so with Goblin, like, was that your idea from the start that you wanted her to have this change of heart over time, or was that a thing that sort of happened during play? That's that's a thing that sort of happened because Corey warned me, like, you no, know, he was like, I'm gonna kill you if you don't, you know, 
Mm. But then, like, at first I did it because I was afraid of him. But then I was like, you know, there's something to this good guy thing. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. Definitely. Like, I, I really like, you know, character development in RPGs. Uh, mm, I think when exactly. it turns out right, it just turns out really, really right. Mm -hmm. um, but there is something to be said for, like, if you go into a character knowing the sort of path you want to take them on, uh, mm -hmm. I think that can be useful too, because you have at least some groundwork for decision making. Um, uh, because like now, like I have to stick to the character of like being entirely good, which I've never played before. Right. In my alignment is chaotic good. I don't know if that's even good for a paladin. Or I should just be like lawful good or something. I don't know how restrictive it is. I know some earlier editions of D and D, like you were required to be lawful good. Um, as a paladin yeah mm. which sounds like a pain but <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i guess people found ways to deal with it uh, i feel like that will you... definitely be a challenge for me yeah like you need that wiggle room right mm -hmm. so with your character now uh, what's your character's name by the way because i keep calling it your character i don't, I don't know their name oh, because i named her or them hannah because i just wanted something like god's mercy or like god's repentance because like that's kind of like is that what Hannah means? Googled it and that's what Google said. Wow. Okay, well that is a way cooler name than I've been giving it credit for. <laughs> let me let me search it again just to make sure. I mean I believe you. Uh, I mean what if you like heard it on a favor, grace, whatever. If you heard it on a podcast, then it must be true. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, fact check yourself. Because that's what we need these days. Fact checking. <laughs> Uh, unless it's about cool names. If your name is Hannah, uh, shout out to you and your cool name. Um, <laughs> so, with with, um, with Hannah, do you have any ideas of like what character development you want them to go through? Because you've already now that you've already had this incident with another member of your party who's sort of injured you. You've been sort of mm -hmm. like not as effective in combat as you've wanted to be, and that's something you might have to develop over time. But did you go into the character with an idea of like I wanted to get from this place to this place mentally more mm -hmm. so than physically oh but after the first session i think i should work on my ego mm -hmm. and like being more of a team player because i went in there like yo like my stats are this like you know like i'm a paladin dragon one like i'm gonna like be the one to like protect everybody and lead the way you know then yeah but like the first session didn't show that so i guess i'm gonna work on my humility <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, fair. I, I think that's good development. Uh, hopefully whatever TD you pick will be uh, proud of you for doing that. I'm curious, because I, I don't know what the Pantheon is like in 5th edition. Um, mm, yeah. I'm curious what there is out there that fits, or even if you got to make up something, which could also be really fun and cool. Oh, that would be fun, yeah. Because I guess you haven't really had a chance to, you know, RP that side of the character, but I think having this extra dimensional power like looming over you and giving you abilities whether it's as this paladin or cleric kind of thing or even as uh, something a little less um what's the word i'm looking for something less noble something less good uh i think mm -hmm. that's such a cool character dynamic like is, is there like a particular thing you would want to do with that i i know a lot of these questions are going to be like hypotheticals because you've only done the one session so far but like, yeah. as far as whatever deity you end up with, is that something that is RPing against that sort of character, whatever they are, it's something you would want to do? Or do you want to more focus on the right now, the physical moments that your character is presently in? Well, I don't know if there's like a deity that's like, cause, cause I went into this like necromancer kind of thing and I had to change it. Maybe like there's a god of the dead or something. Hmm. That could be my god. No, like I want it to be like related to is Hades a thing here or like Satan or the Grim Reaper like I don't know um I kind of I, I mean I guess there's Phrasma as far as Pathfinder goes I'm sure there's some equivalent um mm -hmm. in D&D because Phrasma is like the ultimate neutral god of death who's like judges where souls should go and things like that um that sounds like a perfect god for me if that's a D&D &D thing I want to say Raven Queen, but that might just be a critical role thing. I don't know. Mm. 
I don't know what's canon to your DM's world right now. But there's certainly like plenty of options, I'm sure. Yeah. So what are you looking forward to, uh, I guess, in the next sessions you're gonna be playing with this character? Well, I wanna show my strength, but at the same time, like I wanna humble myself. But I also don't wanna like carry grudges. It's gonna be a like back of my heart knowing not knowing its way out to just like be mad at this person steam player that hit me but you no know, forgiveness is a thing because i've been forgiven for my sins so i should do the same oh that was an accident it was an accident right right how do you think that character feels about it the warlock that hit you i mean she like diana's character is like a child so i think like she's a noob not really oh, sure okay. about her backstory yet so yeah i mean like i know her backstory as a player but like as in like in character like i don't know her backstory okay. we all haven't had a chance to talk about her past yet like the characters yeah, yeah. but she feels about it i think she's like sorry i wish she is that's the nice thing <laughs> <laughs> is that gonna be something that hannah will have to deal with I'm not going to be like, hey, are you sorry? But I'm just like waiting for an apology. Oh, you're not going to Sounds petty. <laughs> you're not going to push for it, but you are expecting it. Yes, yes, yes. Understandable, understandable. <laughs> um, yeah, did you have an introduction with the other characters also? Like, it, it sounded like you kind of just came together for this job and then talked about positions. Did you actually, like, were you able to introduce yourselves? No, I don't think so. Like, the the person that I just talked to was the elf. Yeah, I don't think we, like, introduced ourselves to each other. I mean, well, our players do know about, like, each other, but, like, not the characters and stuff. Like, oh, have some team building to do. Yeah, I, I, I would say so. <laughs> okay, so what, um, how do you think this, I mean, I'm, I'm I want to ask you, like, story-based questions, but I'm very hesitant to do so, because, like, kind of know where your story might go since I've sort of been yet, there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm curious what you think it's going to end up, where you think it's going to end up going. Well, I'm assuming there's going to be a mine somewhere because that's the title of the campaign. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> Lost Mines of Pendlebar. So. That, that is a, a very likely outcome <laughs> of your journey. <laughs> Okay, um, let's talk a bit more about uh, character creation, because you did talk specifically about this character. Um, mm -hmm. I was kind of curious for you, because with this one, like you said, you had the backstory, uh, but you changed it up for your class. So I was kind of wondering yeah. how you start up, how you go about making characters, uh, whether you come in with a story first and then work around that, or you come in with like a class first and then work around that, or some combination of the two. Oh, for I, I used to like, um... This is my first time having a class and then making a backstory because I usually just like my first characters back then was like me. Mm. It's like some something else. So like, oh, this is different. Oh yeah, because you you had like uh, Lady Cam before. I it did was... like the knight, yeah. Ooh, I thought it was and a then cool character. Yeah. I got blind though. Came in there very confident too. So I guess that's like my lesson in RPGs, like. I make these characters thinking I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna be all that. Then like, I get blind and I die. Then get pushed back to life under against my will. <laughs> yeah, Goblin I'm... is pretty cool, <laughs> yeah. I, sorry, I was just gonna say, um, that decision you made with Lady Cam, where she was being revived from death, but she didn't want to go back because she was with uh, the person she loved. I thought that was yeah. a really like brilliant thing to do. Totally random decision. But, totally screwed over the party because we were out one player, but. Yeah. But but also like apparently like the other characters didn't hear my story because I was like in a different realm, but th the players heard it. <laughs> yeah, the players knew this, but the characters didn't know any of this. Characters didn't, yeah. I don't know. That's still one of the one of my favorite like moments to watch or to be present for because it's not the kind of thing that you would expect people to do. At all. Yes, they did. Yeah. Like that's not the choice you'd expect someone to make. So just like not making that choice. It's it's why I like playing with new people because um, you were fairly new at the time, 
and mm-hmm. I think a I think a person who's played for a while would be like, okay, let, let they would think of it mechanically, right? Like they would think, well, let me get back on my feet, let me get back to this many hit points, let me stand up from being prone, let me get back in there so I can get on my initiative on my turn and then then do some damage with my weapon and contribute to the fight. But you were mm-hmm. just seeing it first as like this character thing, and I thought that was really great. Yeah, exactly. It's usually how I go about like. RPGs like I, w- I have a character in mind and like I make everything else like you know, my class my race for that like or like if I'm obsessed with something like, like uh, uh, the the Eminem character that I have like yeah ca- the cow cowgirl person like I was obsessed with Westworld I'm like yeah okay I'm gonna make a character about this yeah. Yeah. we really should get those on the channel I'm just so I want it to be like perfect when we start, which is not mm-hmm. how life works. But you have a really great character there who has a really interesting sort of like story situation um, that I don't want to spoil too much of. I still want to know what happened to um my very beautiful technician sidekick. Right. Right. <laughs> we got to get to that. I don't know. We we got to stream it one day. Uh, maybe when I get my entire life in order, we can do that. <laughs> <Me too>. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think we kind of chilled off what we were talking about before, but you were saying that you start with a character uh, when it comes to making uh, RPG or like, characters. Or like, like, um, like, there was a one time when I was obsessed with cyberpunk. I mean, I still am obsessed with cyberpunk, and I just make a character out of that. Like, a theme, like something I'm watching. Mm-hmm. With this character, I was like obsessed with them. Um, this anime that I want, like Soul Eater. So I tried to make my character like that. It doesn't work because it's a, you know, like that's like level three or five. My DM said, like, this module goes up to like level five. Ooh. Right? Yeah, so like it's gonna be a very long time before I even get there. So yeah, I chose a paladin. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm not super familiar with Soul Eater or most animes. I'm kind of a pleb when it comes to anime. I've just started watching JoJo, mm-hmm. like, this year, so... You know, yeah. I'm a noob. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's a great idea. Like, if you have a piece of media that you're into, um, it can really give you some ideas to work off of. I know I have been an mm-hmm. advocate of, like, steal ideas from things when it comes to GMing. Uh, you can certainly mm-hmm. do it when it comes to being a player as well. So, okay, so you start from the character idea and then you attach things onto it that, like, fit that idea? Yeah, like, okay, what class would this make sense? Or, like, what race would this make sense? Or, like, what weapons, Hmm. like, skills this would make sense? So, are there, like, what do you do in situations where you're not finding something that fits what you're looking for? Like, sort of, I guess, sort of like this situation that you were just in. Like, do you just change up your concept or do you find another workaround yeah i changed my concept like and then i I settled for like yeah i want to do damage but i also like want to help heal myself or people Mm -hmm. so how important is that sort of thing for you like the mechanical stuff like you want to have the high damage output but you also want to have the healing output like how important is that is that like a secondary sort of thing it's a secondary like if i can't do like the character that i want then i'll like i want to be like useful to the team hmm. and be super cool obviously well cam you are inherently super cool so the person i know oh but you need to be you need the characters to be as well okay i understand yes exactly <laughs> you need them to function the right way <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah i i guess i'm kind of just wondering i don't know what else we can say about that because i think we did cover pretty well your ideas for going to character creation um like what do you how, how does it usually feel i wonder like when you like that moment when you your character hits the road like and you come across this sort of thing that's like not what you were expecting but then you start rolling with it like is are those the kind of moments that you look for or look forward to in a game what do you mean moments i'm not expecting like i'm always ready to fight <laughs> like just you know any of those sort of things that require a change in your character's trajectory mm. i mean i mean like at the end of it like i enjoy playing with people so it's like 
whatever role I play, I just want to like focus more on like the, the the players I'm playing with. Like for me, that's what matters the most. Is like picking mm -hmm. with them. Yeah. So the mechanics of the game, uh, whatever game it is, they kind of take the back seat to who you're playing with yeah. or what you're playing. Yeah, exactly. Because like I enjoy like RPing more than like I want to do damage because like well it's a uh, no. But, like I enjoy like when I could actually like role play more, play my character more, and like hitting something or like rolling for like damage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I am curious. Uh, do you have other character ideas lying around that you haven't gotten to use yet? I still want to play a necromancer at some point. I want my army of the dead. That would be a very, yeah. very interesting campaign. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on how that adds up. I don't know, maybe, do you think you would want to inject some ideas like that into this character? Is this character I mean, going to dabble in necromancy? I mean, like, maybe, like, when I'm like, I don't know what level that comes in. Yeah, fair enough. I, like, I, I want a deity who's, like, a god of the death anyways. Yeah, I know Phrasma does not like undead, but I don't know what other options you have available to you. Mm hmm But okay, uh, do you have anything else you might want to say about, you know, your character creation process? No, like, it's just kind of nice to step into someone else, but at the same time still be me, but, like, a different version of me. Or, like, this is my first time that's, like, playing a role that's, like, was against, like, my personality. Mm -hmm. That would be fun, like, stepping into, like, a different person. Yeah, that's, I think, always the fun part of getting into these yeah. games. Yeah, exactly. Uh, especially running them when you, then you have to be, like, a billion different people and pretend that you know how to do voices and that you can remember <laughs> what they all are. <laughs> um, I don't know, have you done any more GMing since you were last on here? No. Ah, uh, Cam, you gotta get on that. I know. We gotta, know. we gotta get you into running some more games. We, uh, we gotta, we gotta get everybody we know into running games. I have that World of Darkness thing, which is like horror. I mean, I want to play like one day, like a horror world. Ooh. Have we yeah. talked about World of Darkness on here? I don't think we have. I like, haven't really read the book. <laughs> okay, but it's it's like a system, right? Yeah, it is, yeah. Like, what, kind of, what is it for? Like, is it like a horror genre kind of thing? It is. It is a horror genre. Like, any specific setting or tone or... There's cults. Cults are part of it, but I don't think it's the only one. There's what, sorry? I don't think it's the only theme. Like, there's more than cults. Okay. Um, but it's that sort of, like, is it um like a Cthulhu kind of thing? Maybe. Not sure. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I mean, we could definitely do that. It is, it is the month for it, so... Halloween, yeah. It is the spookiest month of the year. Um, I mean, I have some... I have some stuff that I haven't played yet. Maybe you can take a crack at running that. Or just, I don't know, any any generic fantasy thing. Uh, if you find yeah. that you happen to like 5th edition better as a system. Um, do you have any like comparisons between the two game systems? Uh, now that you've played 5th edition? Pathfinder and D&D. Yeah. Okay, like, I found, like, D&D a bit easier because it's online, like, the character creation. Like, I click mm. something and it tells me if it's wrong. Like, with Pathfinder, I have to ask you or, like, Ramon yeah. see if it's wrong or if that works. Pathfinder have something like D&D Beyond? Uh, well, I use the uh, Path Builder app basically all of the time. <laughs> Are literally yeah, because the they time. have mine in your phone, right? Like my character's in your phone. Yeah, I think your character is still in my phone. Your original Goblin. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I guess. Yeah, it wasn't until like recently that there was a browser-based version of that, because then I, you would have to like borrow oh. my phone to do it. That would work. Yeah. But yeah, definitely. Like I, I think every system kind of needs something like that. They need like the character creator. Um, mm -hmm. just, it just really makes it easier to get right into the game. Like, I was just exactly. introducing a friend to Pathfinder 2, and it, again, it was way easier with the character creator, because it listed literally all of the options, uh, and it exactly. helped. Exactly. Yeah, like, they, they came in with the idea of the kind of character they wanted to make, 
So it was way easier just to work with that and then figure out those specific things when you have all the options listed in front of you and you know what you qualify for as you level up. Exactly, yeah. Um, same with Mutants and Masterminds as well, uh, the Hero Lab uh, program. Oh, there's one now, like that, for Mutants and Masterminds? Yeah, 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 I've been using it for a while. I don't know if it's still however much it was when I bought it. Um, but yeah, I've been using it for a while. And also now you can, um, they have a new sheet on Roll20. So mm -hmm. it's easier to import a character you make in that into Roll20. There's a couple steps yeah. in between, but like it really, it fills in the majority of the details uh, enough to the point that it's like inefficient not to use it. And yeah, okay. I think that really benefits every system. Because um, mm -hmm. I think with, with every game that I've played, um, it's always the character creation that's the slowest bit. Because it's, it's not the actual playing, uh, and it's the most, like, crunchy part. It's the most numbers part of it. Exactly. So yeah, anything that can adjust that and make that a bit easier. Um, so did you just use D&D Beyond for the creation, Did you, or did you use it for anything else? Yeah, just for the character creation. Okay. Um, I know it has some dice rolling and stuff, but, I mean, nothing beats it rolling does, physical yeah. die. Exactly. I guess I would have had better luck if I rolled, like, the online dice, but... Possibly, but it's not the same. Oh, do you have new dice? Did yeah, you get a yeah. new uh, set of dice to match your character's color scheme? No, not yet, but I'm gonna get something green because my dragonborn is green and I breathe Ooh. acid, I think. Nice. <laughs> it, it, it is very important that your dice match your character, otherwise, uh -huh. <laughs> why even have them? <laughs> exactly. Okay, I think we've covered a lot of cool stuff about character creation and everything like that. Um, anything else you want to say on the system or characters in general? Or could we, should we get to the next part of the show? Next part of the show. Okay, so uh, in the past few weeks, I've been trying to work on doing random encounters. Um, sort of like random events that will happen as people are traveling between cities and places just to spice up the journey more than making it just time passing. Uh, I don't know, I wanted to pick your brain about this because, again, like just like you making that decision when you were a newer player and having this incredibly inventive moment, I'm very curious if you have some cool ideas that I wouldn't have thought of as random events that people can come across when they're traveling or when they're in a city or something like that. Or, I don't know, what kind of monster can someone stumble into? Like, if someone's traveling down a forest path, uh, the weather's getting cold, there's a bit of snow coming in. I don't know, what could they possibly see? Like, is there another traveler that they run into? Or I, I'm basically dragging you into helping me come up with ideas. Okay, that's kind of a lot of pressure, because, like, when you said, like, when you messaged me about something random, I was like, a gelatinous cube, but that's kind of basic now compared to everything you said. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, ideas are ideas, so let's... <laughs> <laughs> a gelatinous cube. <laughs> okay, gelatinous cube, just hanging okay, out. Okay, okay, like, just like, that's idea one. I want to come up with something deeper. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a creature either. Um, that's I something know. I was trying to lean... <laughs> <laughs> That's something I was trying to lean away from. Like, I like the idea of you running into other people who are traveling or just yeah. like seeing something interesting off the path. Uh, those are the kind yeah, of things. What about like, um, you're just walking into somewhere, right? Yeah, like then you're you on hear a scream. Okay. Right? You hear a scream and then like you follow that scream. You see like this person getting sacrificed, like a bunch of like a cult, I guess. And they're like, shipping something like candles like you just saw someone like i sacrifice that person to like a god or something Ooh, what if there's like this brief flash where if you uh if someone if, if if you're able to see it you might be able to see like a brief shimmering image of the deity the, itself that they're trying to summon mm -hmm, it's exactly. actually some like demonic entity Huh? Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. That's better than a cube. <laughs> <laughs> they could be using a cube. We don't know. <laughs> okay, uh, I gotta come up with something cool. Um, <laughs> I I was not prepared for this. Um, I don't know. Uh, I kind of liked the idea of those 
lost horses uh, that you mentioned, but I was thinking maybe an abandoned horse, but it's still alive. Uh, mm. You pass it, uh, it's running, it like runs by you, clearly has been detached from a cart of some sort. Uh, mm -hmm. And then as you're moving on, you see more animals passing by you. They are all running, but they're all specifically running away from something. Mm -hmm. It just so happens that it leads to them running towards you. Uh, and as you, like, you can either make the choice to figure out what the animals are running away from or avoid the spot entirely, maybe extending your travel time by a bit. Uh, and if you follow where they're coming from, you might find... Uh, I don't know, gelatinous cube, maybe. Right, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> or some more, much more dangerous creature. Um, I don't have the entirety of the bestiary in my head. Something high level. Yeah. Or like, or like they're running away from like a dimension that opened and it's sucking like all the other animals in so they have to run away. Oh, yes. Definitely. Yeah, let, that, that could also be something like you're... You're walking down the path, and then you see it looks like there's a tear in the ground, and at first it just looks like there's mm. a pit, but then as you get a bit closer, you see the pit is widening, and then maybe there's mm. some stuff coming out of it as well. Yeah. Like a portal. From hell or something. <laughs> um, or it could be a cube crawling out of the ground. <laughs> a portal to the cube dimension. <laughs> Uh, what if I just grabbed a random creature and we tried to come up with something for that? Right. Okay, I'm on the list of monsters in Pathfinder. I'm gonna click at random with my eyes closed. I hope people like listening to this. Icicle snake. <laughs> Let me Google what that looks like. It's like a snake made of ice. <laughs> I should have figured, yeah. <laughs> Translucent and capable of hanging suspended. I see it, yep. Near motionless. Icicle snakes sense the heat of living creatures as a threat and attempt to use their camouflage and chilling bite against foes. So, icicle snakes. Okay, so I'm picturing uh, maybe it's the middle of winter and there are icicles on the trees, but as you're walking under them, one of them starts moving. Oh, gross. And then it turns. Just have a torch and just burn it, no? And it just melts. <laughs> Is that how they work? I have no idea. <laughs> the ice! True, you got me there. It is a it is a creature made of ice, so it must it's very likely to be weak to fire or something. Okay. I'm gonna have my dragonborn character just breathe into it. Yes. My breath weapon. That'll show. I'm very um I'm very interested in your dragonborn though, because like dragonborn isn't a thing in Pathfinder. Oh. Okay, let's do one more random creature, and then I think we could close out the episode because we did talk we did talk a whole lot more than I thought we would about character creation. And we talked yeah. about a whole lot of interesting stuff, so. Um, an orca. Isn't that like a whale or something? A killer whale. That's a Pathfinder creature. Well, they have stats for it, but I don't think it's not a fantasy creature. But we can do something with this. Uh, what's a way you can come across an orca, but it's on land somewhere? So I guess maybe uh, in a city or something, or some sort of traveling zoo? Oh, or like... Um... Because, like, you know, humans or other creatures might be polluting the ocean. Mm. It's like, venging, like, the pollution that we cause to their environment. Oh, vengeful orca. <gasps> Wait, what about um, ghost orca? It's dead. <laughs> yeah, it's like... It, it died because of the climate change down there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Magic climate change, because it's the fantasy realm. But the orca turned into a ghost. Uh, and its uh -huh. spirit is floating around, seeking vengeance on those that, I don't know, dumped their nuclear magic Litter. waste in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it was a bunch of people dumping their used spell vials into the ocean. Mm -hmm. And the orca was just so angry, it became a ghost, and now it's, uh, anytime you go near the coast, there's a chance it might show up. It's like, recycle that thing. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll kill you. <laughs> Yeah, you can, if you see it, you can, like, fend it off by promising to recycle your used potions, but you have to know how to talk to the sea creature. You can use a spell for that, or, like, trans, oh, orca translator. Yeah, exactly. Someone who speaks orca. <laughs> okay, this is probably the silliest thing that's ever happened on this podcast. 
when I'm here, expect it. <laughs> uh, Cam, you are a delight. Um, I've had a lot of fun talking I to know. you. About this <laughs> <laughs> Uh, make it till you make it, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, man. Okay, I had a lot of fun talking to your character. I'm super interested in what you're going to do next because having gone through this adventure before, I really want to know... Um, I want to say, I want to know what you choose to do next and where you choose to go first and sort of what you end up doing in certain places. Um mm -hmm. I also don't know how long your adventure is going to go for, so I don't know if you're going to cover everything that we did. Uh, I don't know. I really want to know. Uh, this is going to be a very interesting experience having someone else go through another adventure that's being run by a different person. Yeah. So if you out there want to hear about that whenever we talk about it, whenever I am able to pull Cam onto the show again, uh, why don't mm -hmm. you just hit that subscribe button so you can get in, in your notification box, or your inbox, or your subscription box, rather, whenever a new episode goes up. Uh, also remember to ring that notification bell so you get notified when we put up a new podcast episode and get notified when we go live. I've been doing weekly live streams, uh, doing some gaming streams, just playing Skyrim for the first time ever in my life. Um, you know, after everybody else has played it uh, for multiple, many years. Uh, it's been a unique and interesting experience. Um, I've been getting Skyrimmed pretty hard. I've just sort of accepted my fate that no matter what I go into the game wanting to do, I will do five other things before I get to it. So if you want to see me be easily distracted and sing a lot, I've also noticed, uh, please go check out those episodes. Uh, and also be sure to check out our episodes of our Lancer stream, where Ramon brought us through the first season of our stream of Lancer RPG, mech RPG episodes. Uh, it was a whole lot of fun playing a person piloting a giant robot. If you dig giant robots, be sure to check that out. Uh, speaking of giant robots, be sure to check out the Field Guide to Unfukane, uh, written by our friend NHB Shaka. Uh, it's a great setting for your Lancer games, as well as some new uh, characters and some new mech parts that you can bring into your games to sort of spice those up, uh, put something unique into them. Uh, you can find the LCP file on the itch.io page, which I'll link below as well as uh, Celeste's uh, Lancer NPC guides. You can use those to figure out the best way to use Lancer NPCs whenever you run in your own uh, Lancer game. Uh, the best way to get them to work together, to mix with each other, and some unique adventures that you can put your players through. Uh, and lastly, shout out to the Untold Stories Project channel. We have a lot of friends, by the way, Cam. I don't know if you know. Well, I, I'm famous. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you will be friends with them too. <laughs> <laughs> um, shout out to the Untold Stories Project channel, uh, where I'm there every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern playing Mutants and Masterminds in their Nether War campaign. Uh, my character just got his sidekick, uh, which is a storyline that's been building up for a while now. After t completely as a joke, um, this character got inserted and he was stealing the wheels from my motorcycle, my character's motorcycle. <laughs> Uh, and now he's a fully fledged sidekick. He has a suit. He has a crossbow. He is super cool uh, when he rolls well. So be sure to go check out those episodes. Uh, they are a whole lot of fun and they will be linked below. But I think that is everything we have to mention uh, for this game. Cam, do you have anything you want to plug? Yo, I got a job now. Last time I was here, like, no, the, the other time I was here, I was like, yo, I don't have a job. Update, I got a job in social work. Oh, nice. Plugging myself in your, if you're hiring in that field. Thank you very much. <laughs> I have experience now. <laughs> well, that is phenomenal, phenomenal news. So uh, everybody who's listening yeah. to this now, uh, be sure to drop a congratulations for Cam below if thank you made it you. through this episode. Uh, but thank you so much, everybody, for listening. Uh, we're super glad to have you here. Uh, hopefully onward to another... 60 plus episodes. We're at episode 65, if you could believe it. I think this is 65. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even count them anymore. I just have too much fun. But we will see y'all next week. And uh, the last thing we want to leave you with is the most important piece of advice of all. And that's to keep on winning with dice. And we'll see you later. Bye.